Kirsten wasn't crazy. Kirsten was having real feelings about being bullied. And when I, when I asked him, when I saw him right after the incident, I said, what were you thinking? And he said, Mom, I just wanted him to stop. Bullying has been around forever. I was bullied myself as an eighth grader. I have seen school violence and the bullying problem just escalate uh, to epic proportions. I had been being bullied that day at recess. All schools have bullying. I grabbed a jump rope. I got a phone call one day from the school. They told me that I needed to come down there right away. I tied one end of the jump rope to the equipment, and then the other one, I tied a noose. He felt he had no one to stand by him, so he literally was brought to the brink. Kids were chanting, jump, 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 do it, do it. There are kids all over the world, all over the country, that are just like Christian. These are our children. These are our neighbors. These are our brothers, our sisters, our cousins. These are our classmates. And so as a police chief, um, obviously I take it very seriously and feel like it's something we need to address with the school districts. How else is it going to stop? How else is the pain going to end? I just like learning and I, I especially like computers and engineering and hands-on kind of stuff. but. I started to get bullied and that kind of changed me liking school. Bullying usually can manifest itself around five or six years old. And then it, and then it, it, it and at first it could be just some intimidation, maybe some, some name calling, things like that. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will never hurt me type of thing. But the thing is, is that it, as it progresses through the age and it gets up to the age that Treasure Mountain deals with, which is 13, 14, 15 year olds, is it turns physical. It's usually just a name calling type of thing, verbal, and then it turns physical. And then that's where we start getting involved with the police. That's when it starts getting uglier and uglier. Each day, 100,000 children will purposely miss school or be tardy for school simply because they're afraid to be bullied or because they're in a situation that makes them feel unsafe or uncomfortable in school. One of the interesting things about bullying is typically a child that has been bullied will, will bully themselves. Uh, whether they find uh, bully a younger sibling or they'll find someone that they feel uh, that they can control. Students who are being bullied or who have been bullied oftentimes can turn out to be bulliers themselves. These issues are learned behaviors. They learn them uh, from other students, they learn them at home, they learn them from older brothers or sisters and if it's accepted by the parents and is excused as uh, a kid being a kid, that's a huge issue. Parents have to take an active role and a lot of times depending on the environment the child's raised in, they'll adopt the same views as their parents. So if a parent doesn't see it as an issue, uh, and a, a bullying doesn't stop in childhood, it goes on in workplace, it goes on in many, many environments. My mom would try to wake me up and I, I just didn't want to go to school. I. I had such a hard time and I didn't want to go to school because I knew I was going to get bullied. I knew I was going to, I knew what was going to happen. It was terrible to see your 12 year old son um, be in tears in the morning when you'd go to get him up. He, he didn't want to, he, he begged me, don't let me, don't let, don't make me go to school today. Can I just stay home today? We become concerned when it becomes physical or it uh, creates, a, comes to a point where uh, young people are losing self-esteem or, or, or losing sleep or not going to, to school, uh, have to result to um, medications to treat depression. Uh, they said, I was recently reading in the uh, Department of Justice said that uh, a child that uh, is bullied is nine times li more likely to become depressed. They, they start having excuses why they don't want to come to school, they're not eating right, um, they're um, interacting with other students, has, becomes a problem. Students that are once happy and, and uh, smiling and getting good grades, um, their grades will stop you know, doing as well. They'll, um, you know, it just, it's, it's a myriad of problems like that, not having any positive influences.
Studies now tell us that teen suicide or suicide among young people is the third leading cause of death among young people. And we now know that people that are victim, that have been bullied, young kids that have been victimized or bullied, are nine times more likely to commit suicide. We also know that teen depression is the leading cause of suicide. And educators and doctors now believe that bullying has a direct link to depression. So when you look at the numbers statistically, you begin to see the real damage that bullying causes. I think really got my grades down is just my depression and just not caring about it anymore. But I felt scared the most, I think. Scared that I would be bullied more and just have no one do anything about it, have people not do anything about it. Schools are, are a key, and the school districts are a key to providing success here. If uh, the students don't feel that they have a relationship with uh, the school administration and that they can report bullying and that something's going to be done about it, it'll continue to progress and become worse and worse. One of the biggest things that we, that we combat when we're dealing with bullying is the, uh, the fear that students don't want to come and report it because of um, intimidation, because of, they feel like if I go and report this and that kid finds out that I did it, I'm, I'm, my, I'm dead meat. And that's one of the biggest things that we combat. So, you know, and that's a touchy situation. So one of the things that we've created, and I think a lot of other schools have done it as well, is we have an anonymous bullying site. So we're on our, on our Treasure Mountain website, they can go and there's a drop down menu that goes to students and it goes in there and it's just real easy to get to and students can report an instance of bullying. Our parents have done it too and so have teachers. Um, where I, don't, I get it directly to me, sent to me, I don't know who it's from and then we investigate that, the names and such like that. That's one way that we try to get, get around this retaliation thing. Uh, the primary message is very simple, that we're all in this together. You know, we have two choices in the world. We can either fight one another or we can fight for each other. Uh, our differences, we need to celebrate them rather than to prey upon them. When we work with the educators and the adults and the parents of the community, we try to send that message that it really is a village that raises a child, that we need to stop segregating the children. We need to become allies to our children. We need to find a way to help our children prosper and grow in a very safe and civil environment. When we talk to the children, we, we kind of approach them a little bit differently from a very intimate point of view. We try to get them to understand that, hey, you know, life is tough enough, and we really all are in this together. We are in this together from the very beginning, and we need to learn to fight for each other. We need to learn to stand up for each other. We need to learn to stick up for each other and help each other get through this thing called life. And I think that's what our program does. It challenges young men and young women, instead of being the bully, how about be the hero? How about stand up and make a difference for that kid who sits next to you every single day because one day you might be that kid. So we've called the program Stand By Me and because we believe that if we all stand by each other, if we stand by each other and defend each other and support one another and in a sense champion one another, we're building our program loosely upon a military concept, the concept of the battle buddy. Uh, I work with the United States military, primarily with special operations units and high-risk law enforcement personnel. And I learned by working with military personnel and law enforcement personnel that the success of the mission or the success of a soldier's life is dependent upon the soldiers around him. One of the things that we're going to try to do and teach the children is why not be a battle buddy in life? Why not be each other's battle buddies? Life is going to be tough enough and you and I both know that. <clears throat> but why not become a battle buddy with mom and dad? Why not become a battle buddy with your school and your community? But most importantly, why not instead of picking on one another, why not become battle buddies in the school? Help each other get through this difficult time in our life and prosper and thrive and use that premise that, you know, we are in this together. And together, if we stick by one another and we really reach in there and stand by one another, if we become battle buddies to one another, I think we have a better chance to make it through this. I think we all do, not just the kids, but even you and I in all of our lives. We meet with the young people that we tell them that they have a responsibility to make change. We can't do it alone. They have to be involved. They have to have the courage to stand up and make the change when change is needed. It doesn't do any good after somebody's taken their life. It doesn't do any good after an, another Columbine's happened. If, if uh, a student feels that they are, are so desperate that that's their only avenue, either suicide or, or taking someone else's life, we've all failed. 
and we have to we have to take a stand as a community, as a school, as a student body, and that's where I want to see this program go. Not just another program, but uh, a real take everyone taking ownership in, in fixing the problem.